One, two, three, no life without wife. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, twenty one. No life, no life without wife. Without life. Twenty one, twenty one, twenty one. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Hello and welcome to Entertainment Actions, <laughs> the podcast where we talk about films, TV, and Redman. All of it. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ollie. I'm Tom. <laughs> and I'm Ben. Today we're talking about the 1994 film. Uh, 2000, <laughs> the 1994 film. Bride and Prejudice. Ooh. This will contain spoilers. <gasps> Now, before I start, I want to just warn people that the spoiler warning applies to Pride and Prejudice as well. Which is a book. So if you've not read the book or seen the movie or seen the BBC miniseries... By Jeanne Austen. Based, that's what she's based on this. Though. It's ba- Oh, yeah. yeah. It's based on Bride and Prejudice. So if you don't want that spoiled, you know, be careful. Spoilers here. So the, the sto- story is... It does have a story. Why does it feel like this is harder to describe than playtime? Uh, <laughs> the story is that there's... Uh, a family in I've already forgotten the place name it said at the start a family in India uh, they want their daughters to get married um, and then there's there's people come from England and America looking for w- wives but then Mr. Mr. Darcy oh he's he's grumpy and, and he's American and he's American and ignorant to other cultures and quite, he's just quite bad the whole time. <laughs> he's quite a meanie. Yeah. Um, uh, and then Adam Sandler arrives. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just to be clear, this is the Indian Adam Sandler. So <laughs> that looks a lot like Adam Sandler in Uncut Gems. He's got the glasses, he's got the beard, he's got the, the frantic, dance moves. The dance moves, the frantic demeanor. At one point, he even has the like slicked back, sorry, the pushed back hair mm. um, <laughs> of him in that movie. Uh, and he arrives and there's basically just a lot of love triangles there's a British man that says hello hello yeah. and then he tries to nick the 16 year well Lolita who's the main character like the film which this is in the movie she says she's, someone says what's your name she says Lolita and they're like oh that's a cute name like the movie <laughs> like that cute film <laughs> like the you know the cute movie oh what a wholesome time um, and she falls in love with the British man that says hello. Hello. But then he goes off with her sister called like Lucky. It sounds like Lucky, so they call her Lucky. And she wears a shirt that says Lucky. Um, and and so she's like, oh, but I thought he loves me. But then he doesn't send her an email. So, and then it turns out he knocked up a 16-year-old once and then like got money to cover it up. And he's a bad man. So they get rid Goodbye. of him, and then she falls in mm. love with Mr. Darcy because he sits next to her on her on a plane. I think that's this all is, the plot. Yeah, yeah. And, and there's a red man on the plane. Oh, there's a. Sorry, I forgot. Oh, so I, before I before we start, um, one of the actual key plot lines. Yeah. is, is that during this integral scene um, between Mr. Darcy and um, whatever her name Lolita. is, Lolita. Come on, Lolita. like the movie, <laughs> but with an oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so between the, the lovely wholesome movie and Mr. Darcy, um, in the background, there's an extra on the plane, and I don't know if you follow us on TikTok and Instagram. If you do, you'll have seen him. Mm. He, he's very red. He's, he's red. very old and very dead looking. He doesn't move much, does he? He looks like he's holding his breath for quite a long time. <laughs> he's just kind of sat there like this. I was waiting I for him to progressively red. Though, I well. was waiting for him to end up turning blue, if I'm honest. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. He stayed red. Turning red. 
Oh. And, yeah, so that was not just a reference to the uh, the movie Turning Red, but it was also some colour symbolism because red symbolifies love. Yeah. And there's a whole scene in, yeah. <laughs> uh, there's there's a whole scene in a Mexican restaurant where there's a bunch of red stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah, um, there is. There's a rose. Yeah, yeah, there's um, you know, one of them's wearing red. Yeah. Um yeah. And yeah, it all wow. just comes back to the red man, really. And if you look really hard, he is actually hiding in the flowers. He is. <laughs> yeah, if you look, you squint. He obviously chose invisible rather than, um, rather yeah. than flying. Yeah, yeah. So the vibe of this movie is it's supposed to be a kind of fun, like Bollywood esque. It isn't Bollywood though, because it is quite British. Well, if you're wondering why we chose this, because it's quite obscure. Basically, yeah, give us in, the backstory. Um, it was year nine geography, right? Yeah, yeah. It was just at high school we were um, shown this. Um, we can't exactly remember why, because it didn't seem to link to any of the stuff we'd done. We didn't study anything about India or, or anything Or like even that. movies. No, yeah. like, of if anything, it would make more sense in English if we'd done like... Yeah. yeah. Honestly, the Something. closest link we could find is we did a topic on China and there's a boat that was like the, <laughs> the, chi- the China Eye or something. Yeah. yeah. But to be fair, we only watched the first 20 minutes. Yeah. So we but, could remember the couple, the first couple of uh, dance numbers. But yeah. So, but we, we thought it was like proper Bollywood, but, you know, upon doing some digging, it was it was actually quite surprising that it's, it's, it's not. It's really kind of a British film. Yeah. It's the director of Bend It Like Beckham mm. did mm. this. Uh, and also, oh, the writer, oh, I can't remember, but there's loads of British people in this. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's also like, it, so it's basically, it's a Bollywood interpretation-ish. Again, it's quite British, so there's they just speak English throughout, mainly, apart from some of the songs. Um, and so it's got a lot of fun dance numbers, which, like, the dancing's pretty good. Yeah. It is, yeah. But the... The dancing's the, much better than the singing. Yeah, the lyrics will get on. Oh, I think this... Technically, the singing is okay. The singing is itself good. was all right. The sinking. The sinking and the lyrics were felt dodgy, but like it has a fun vibe, but it's almost the whiplash is almost too much <laughs> at times. There's a lot of early 2000s energy of yeah. men wearing jean, tight, skinny jeans and nose tops, quick zooms. Yeah. Cut. There was a scene on a beach where it's like they're surrounded by people, then it starts getting dark and then it's just them two and then suddenly there's more people there and she's playing guitar at a campfire and then suddenly it's like a club on the beach oh, and it's like and this, this yeah. is literally that happens as fast as I said it <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah the, there's just like a bunch of cuts and there's no like apparent like no, no no sort of line between them it's just a bunch of like snapshots from throughout the day yeah it's just, it's just kind of odd that. it did seem to have quite a big pacing issue because there were sequences like that where it just moved so rapidly it was genuinely hard to keep track of what was going on and some bits were like so slow mm. I mean to be fair every scene with like Adam Sandler in <laughs> got his name <laughs> it's Adam, Adam Sandler is his name they were like I really enjoyed it because they seemed to take so much longer than any other scene where yeah. it was just him being like awful <laughs> <laughs> going like, <laughs> and, and going <laughs> <laughs> and then like saying something about I feel like if it was made now, he would, have about, hand. he would have talked about crypto if it was made <laughs> yeah. now. Oh, he would. <laughs> but instead he talks about his like property and investment. Yeah. And I can't even remember how America's he awesome. Would definitely own a couple of NFTs. Yes, he would. He'd be, he would probably email them to his friends. Oh, he would. He would, yeah. He'd not this out. It's not Bored Ape. No, he would not. not I think he'd go more niche. He'd, oh, he'd be annoyed that NFTs. Bored Ape was yeah, too yeah. mainstream. It's like he'd, be, he'd be going on about how Bored Ape sort of destroyed the, the presence of NFTs in the media. Exactly. Yeah. Just devalued some of his investments. Yeah, exactly. But one of the important things, and I need to stress this is financial advice, is you have to go out and buy houses to be rich. Yes, yeah. yes. Because, um, you know, once you've got a, a big four-bedroom place in, in, uh, in America, you're rich. Yeah, just buy a house. Yeah, once you've spent the money, you're rich. It's all yeah. right. Yeah. So that's all you really need to do. Um, so go do it, really. I mean, What's come on. You? Chase your dreams. Chase your dreams. Uh, another point is that she's sexy because she reads Pride and Prejudice on the beach. 
Yeah, that's kind of meta. And that was crazy because I was like, oh, that's like the story that's happening now <laughs> with with a guy called William Darcy. Like she's reading it. Was she not reading it going like, oh, the, the love interest is William Darcy, a brooding, <laughs> annoying man that the, the, the love interest falls in love with <laughs> after she's trying to be married off to someone more wealthy by her mum. This feels a bit familiar. It's the Truman Gonna skip to head to the yeah. end. And- <laughs> that would be awesome if it was like a Truman Show reveal. <laughs> That'd be cool. Kaufman's uh, Pride and Prejudice. <laughs> I'd love to say a Kaufman Pride and Prejudice. A Kaufman Bride and Prejudice. Oh, that's a different story. Uh, his well, dance numbers would involve a lot more dead pigs, though, I think. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> but it's... So it kind of... It has the full aesthetic, I think. Yeah. But at times, it's a bit disorienting. And I think that the... My main problem is the songs just aren't catchy enough. Yeah. To, they apart don't, from one. Apart from No Life no Without Life, life. which when we hadn't sang it for without a while, I'd forgotten the melody again. But <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The only reason that's yeah, catchy yeah, is because the yeah. image of Adam Sandler in his tight um, <laughs> USA flag, <laughs> like <laughs> thong, <laughs> doesn't leave much to the imagination. <laughs> that is in the middle of the song where they go like, maybe he's good in bed. And they're like, maybe not. Actually. He's just like... <laughs> he, no, he goes... <laughs> <laughs> He's my favourite character. Yeah, well, I feel like he was the best because um, he just fully committed to being goofy. And yeah. I feel like that's when this film was at his best, when it was just... When he discovered that. halfway through the film that he could laugh by going... <laughs> yeah, and he just kept doing it every time. <laughs> Why did he only do that towards the end? Because do you reckon if this was shot out of order, then maybe it was just the screenwriter halfway through, like, you know what? We need to add this guy. Mm. Good laugh. <laughs> well, there's something to be said about that. There's there's sort of a few things tend to shift sort of around the halfway mark. So one of them is the actual storyline between Lolita and Mister Darcy. Because I mean, I've not I mean I've not read Pride and Prejudice, but you've read the book and you've seen the film. Um, is Mister Darcy in it a lot? Well, something that I mean. I can't remember the book perfectly, but he seems to, he's not in it a ton, but he is like referenced way more than he was. Yeah, they in this. He feels more omnipresent. Whereas in this, it was like yeah, he was in it at the start, and then it kind of felt abandoned, and then he just like it's like became he, the focus. He the, he gets talked about yeah. quite a fair bit, and it and it feels like that the bit where they're actually falling in love doesn't start happening twenty minutes before the film ends. No, yeah. Well, I can't remember even. Yeah, it's not. No, there was no uh, like, insight into her opinion on Darcy much. It was always like, she was oh, just I like, don't I don't like, like him. Yeah, I didn't like him. But it was like. Here there was, there was no very clear change. animosity. Yeah. And even right until like 10 minutes were left in the film. Yeah. They, they kind of got a little bit closer after the plane ride. And then yeah. she was just like, oh, yeah, I hate you again. Yeah. Well, for good reason. Oh, well, yeah. But it's, it's just. And then you're like, how long's actually left for them to wrap this yeah. up? Yeah. And it kind of gets wrapped up a bit, and then towards the end, you think they're gonna kiss, and they just kind of embrace. They just, yeah, they do a little hug. It's or just, the final scene where, uh, like, she falls in love with him. I guess is it cuts to him like now he can suddenly play this like traditional <laughs> drum, <laughs> and you're like, oh, I don't know about this. <laughs> <laughs> you just see her and it just cuts to like a bunch of Indian guys and there's him like dressed all in white in the middle just like <laughs> with legs kind of spread <laughs> looking really awkward while the drummers in the background are like grinning maniacally <laughs> yeah. at this <laughs> oh uh, it was yeah I think that the performance I think that the actress of Lolita was actually really good yeah she was she had yeah. some great like I'm upset faces and also able to be quite like snarky, but not totally unlikable because you're like, yeah, she's in the right there. Things like that. Yeah. I think Mr. Darcy just kept putting on the like, oh, face, the kind of, oh, I'm a hurt little boy. <laughs> so I'm not sure about his. No. It was fine. I think his performance, it was fine. But it was nowhere near as good as Adam Sandler. No. What a job he did in this. I mean, wow. Oscar worthy. Oscar. Yeah. Oh, he should have won the Oscar. Um, I think the mum was actually really good. She was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot of the acting was pretty decent. I thought. Yeah, it was. It was good. Um, so, and some of the side characters. There's some like classic British actors. There's uh, Indira 
Varma. Varma, that's the surname. Uh, who's been in Game of Thrones. Um, and oh, I've already forgotten everything she was in. She was in Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning recently. And Torchwood. You may have seen her in. Torchwood, and, Doctor Who. Uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Oh, she was in Obi-Wan Kenobi, yeah. She, uh, was she oh, was... I've just re- remembered her character. Oh, yeah. yeah, it is her. She just has not aged at all in 20 yeah, years. It's same. scary. And then like there's... Paul Rudd. Um... Darcy's sister who shows up to be like, oh yeah, by the way, um, he's terrible, but For I'm, gonna, but I'm not then. saying that, in, I'm saying that in a way that I think he's not terrible because I don't realise it's about you. Um, but she is in The Handmaid's Tale. because so I was like, oh, I recognise her being dodgy. Uh, and I think spoilers for the Handmaid's Tale, but she starts off being nice. I, I'm really worried because she either betrays the main character or she like is just absolutely abused by her like which i mean obviously happens a lot by the you know the rich people that own her or whatever but i think that she does end up being a bit evil but maybe she's just not and i'm it's been a while since i've watched it as well so i can't really remember very clearly yeah i think that's who elizabeth moths is friends with at the start but i don't know all right maybe not um but she's been just be wrong yeah there's basically there's a lot of there's a few actors that have gone on to do Bigger stuff, so they got some good good picks. Mm. Um, so yeah, that was, that was pretty good. I mean, this clearly had a decent budget behind it. It must have done. I mean, some of the the look of it is a bit dated, but um, you know, that's kind of what you expect from two thousand and four slash nineteen ninety four, as I said. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, uh, that's how dated it seems. Yeah, wow. it feels thirty years old. <laughs> yeah, even though they've got emails, Ollie. Oh. Emails play an integral part. Um, Johnny see this Wickham, so who is the guy that hello. gets... Hello, it's him, who got a 16-year-old pregnant and turned out to be a terrible person. Um, I love you. I want to take you back to London. He, I think it was... Oh, no, it wasn't him, was it, that was going? Oh, was it him? That did what? Well, there was someone else. No, it was the other guy. Was it Barrage that was like... I'll email you when I get back. It was Barrage. Yeah, yeah. Barrage was, like, was like, I'll email you when I get back this to is London. Like a really sad scene of just the three of them checking their emails. emails <laughs> and it's just no new mail. Massive, music, pathetic yeah. fallacy of rain and, <laughs> and then <laughs> dark, and she sad music. No new mail. As soon as the no new mail Tragic. thing comes up, it cuts to Lolita singing on a balcony. <laughs> it, she doesn't get up dramatically from the computer and go up. It just cuts to her singing on the balcony. And you're like, Whoa! <laughs> wow! I can't yeah. tell if that's like just aged terribly because of. Oh, at the time it was like actually quite. It must have been cathartic. cheesy. Well, no, it must no. have been cheesy at the time. Well, it's, it's not as cheesy as now because like emails weren't really <laughs> the MSN. Yeah, email. I feel like it's definitely aged poorly. Are you t- telling me Indian matchmaker is aged poorly if the mum just like scrolling through the three people that came up or whatever. <laughs> Like a basic HTTP size. <laughs> it really, oh, that was top quality website. People are going to be saying that about um, Instagram and TikTok in 20 years' time, which you should follow us on whilst oh. they still exist yeah. at EOV Podcast on both of those platforms. Exactly. Good plug. Good yeah. plug. Good plug. Um, I was about to say speaking of plugs, but I couldn't figure out a way to... Speaking of plugs... The, speaking uh, of plugs, three Adam swimming Sandler's pool butt. Jokes. Oh, okay. That was pretty good. Yeah. The three swimming pools joke. That was a good They've joke. got plugs in them. I didn't get the joke at first, which is... There's three pools. Pool, but I think it is a good joke. One I just... is hot water, one is cold water, yeah. and one's for when What's you don't want to swim. What's the third one for? Oh, you... There's yeah. timing involved, Ben. But okay. yeah. Yeah. Well, Third one's for when you This is why to... I wasn't in Bride and Prejudice, obviously. And then they uh, reference it later. They reference it later, because he has two swimming pools. Um, Adam Sandler. Imagine only having two swimming pools. Well, one's hot, Just one's cold, but he doesn't one. have the third for when he doesn't want to swim. It's because he's always swimming. He's always beach. <laughs> <laughs> is that the plot point? Oh, yeah, Ken's in this. Yeah, yeah. We th- well, there's someone that looks like Beach Ken. Oh, that scene where the... the Surrounded by the choir, I think, and then they disappear. There is a huge choir. Like, it starts panning across, and you're like, how many of these people are you, you there? you think it would be a smallish gospel choir of maybe 20, 30 people, but no, it keeps going. It goes for so long. Um, and then they, like, crowd around them, have a big, big dance number, and then they fade away. Oh, and then I was like, oh, is it all a dream? Oh. 
But I think it was... And it was all a dream. I don't know what it was. They just stood there for hours. They just stood there for hours. (laughs) Yeah, so this film has some editing issues. But um, Oscar for best editing. Well, it's still, it's still better than Bohemian Rhapsody. Best editing <laughs> equals most editing. I mean, That's true. Exactly. Yeah. I think Mile 22's editing was pretty good. Oh, they got a lot of cuts in there. Well, I think the editor should have an Oscar just for having to deal with that many cuts. <laughs> exactly. You know? Yeah. You know, like, um, most script. Is that yeah. one? Most original script. Oh, wait, no, that's actually... <laughs> most no, movie. Sense. Most movie. I love. Oh, that's my favorite one. Um, I feel like Satan Tango kind of rigged it a bit. Yeah, it's cheating. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's like, come on, no one's gonna beat that. Um, but either the we're Irishman jumping all over good. the place with this one, aren't we? <laughs> I think it fits the vibe of Brian yeah, Satan yeah. Tango and Brian Prejudice. No, I mean the jumping all over the Just, place. Yeah. We're matching you're, the yeah. energy. Have fun with the timestamps. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are they all about right, now? Eight twenty <laughs> about the music. Eight thirty. Eight thirty four about the um, Adam Sandler. Eight thirty five about Adam about like um oh, the the red man. And now you have to put in the timestamp about us talking about the, the time timestamp. Stamp, time stamp. <laughs> oh, that's how we know we've gone better. Oh, wow. Speaking of meta. She was reading Pride and Prejudice, the book. Table, we all can imagine <laughs> Did you know she was reading Pride and Prejudice, the book? And he looks for a girl that is uh, uh, intelligent, c- can read books. No, it wasn't can read books. No, it was, <laughs> read, books. Maybe it was well, yeah. And uh, could speak multiple languages. Ooh. So she's pretty perfect. And that was while he was at Oxford. Yeah. Yeah, so he went to Oxford, I guess. But he's American. He's American and lives in California, I think. But his family are in New York, and that's why he likes India, because uh, the family can all get together more easily. But his dad died. (laughs) (laughs) I swear swear that's what he said. (laughs) He was like, I love India because all the family can get together, but my dad died. (laughs) I was like, I what? Do not that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're all, the rest of my family are in New York, so we can't meet them. <laughs> <laughs> what, what did you think of the, the deep commentary on imperialism and different sides of India? Where they said, oh, you're a colonizer. And he's like, oh, I'm American. And she's like, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty good. No, I think America bad. It felt like it was trying to say stuff that made sense about like tourists and the view of India from, um, you know, Britain and America and other Western countries, but then also kind of like fumbled over itself. It was really strange. Cause like there definitely are a ton of people who will just go to like a like walled resort in a country and have like every like comfort available to them and they'll, you know, maybe try a curry and that's the the spice of local yeah local culture. Mm. Um you know, maybe maybe try a bit of dancing or something, but all within this very like very westernized like slice of um like upper class area and not actually, you know, in, explore the country itself. Yeah. I did get what it was trying to do with that, but also it just it was a weird way of doing well, it. To be honest, that's one of my main criticisms of the original text is that it all seems so isolated within these like highly upper class mm. um, aristocrats. So it was quite interesting having a, a couple of different perspectives, even if that was still, it was still like a similar class level, but it was, um, you know, the, the regional differences at least provided like a bit of variety rather than just everything being in these really fancy well, big homes. it's odd because it's the same where it's they do because in in Pride and Prejudice, right? I've forgotten the main character's name, uh, but Kira Knightley is <laughs> like her family is lower class, yeah, uh, and farm stuff. But they when they attend all the big glamorous parties, that is like new and a step up for her. But in this, all the big glamorous parties are like thrown by the Indian family, yeah. So it does subvert that, but it's also kind. But I don't know. It confuses because that's supposed to be that it's showing this kind of vibrant culture, but it's still in like huge. That is true. Mansions, but at least it's kind of 
It realises that in reference. Yeah, I mean, that's I, true. I think they did make a, a conscious effort to change some stuff. I mean, it did deviate quite a lot from the source material, which, I mean, that's but you know, this good or a bad thing. But it, it's still it's got, different. like, the Mr. Darcy's a prick. But oh, yeah, well, obviously it's got around. similarities, but yeah. I just mean, it is its own thing. It's not yeah. just like the... I mean... It's not Romeo well, plus yeah, Juliet. Yeah, exactly. Where they just have a few things that like, update it with guns and that yeah but the same the dialogue parts. yeah <laughs> although one thing i d- didn't feel it did like even try as well was it i, th- I felt like it wanted to say something about arranged marriages and that, yeah it didn't really say anything about because it, it was first it was it started arguing like the good things about them or like that they're, they're miss represented but then, yeah it's like the, the the western view of marriage has higher divorce rates and it's actually I don't know if that was a defense of it or what, whatever, but yeah. After that, it was just like you know, one of the other sisters um, just had an arranged marriage, and everyone was just like, "Yep, good, cool." Yeah, mm. but it, but it was also so. Th- the, but there was also then one that was framed as bad, like because there was the whole thing of having the Adam Sandler person that it was almost like it was seemingly being forced and it was trying to say it was bad, but then it ends up being fine anyway. And like, I understand because the point it's making is that there is a common misconception of conflating arranged marriage with forced marriage, which are two yes. very different things. Yeah. Whereas arranged marriage is still quite, it's a very common practice and it ends up usually very happily. It's just different um, ways of doing things. Um, but it didn't like to me. It didn't like properly show that process, and seems to be to be a bit fumbled and like mm. about what was arranged and whether they just picked their partners. Any like it, it didn't clear up those misconceptions for me. Yeah. No. So yeah, which was a bit sad. They could have done. I they feel could, like could've. even if they. Even if they'd done it in defense of arranged marriages, that would have been... No, that's what I think it was in, doing. Really? Yeah. She was defending them the whole time. The whole time it was like, mm, it seemed so, like so, it was yeah. trying to say that, that they're not the same as forced marriages and you can have these happy outcomes, but it didn't do it very well, which is yeah, why you... It would have just yeah. been better to have that a bit more explicit, even, you know. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, that just shows how n- not well they did it because we thought yeah. they were saying two, <laughs> two completely different things. Different things. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that's just a general problem this film had. It was almost trying to cover a bit too much. Like the the story was almost a bit a few too many threads. I think, and often that's why like the whole Darcy payoff didn't fully feel earned yeah. because it, they had to rush it towards the end because they were focused on other things. There I was think. so many characters where we kept going like. They had mentioned, oh, these two have run off, and that's bad. And we're like, oh, those two were together, were, yeah. And then these, t- okay. <laughs> well, that almost seems like it's a a slight issue with it being a musical as well, because a lot of the runtime has to be spent singing. But also, it didn't feel much like a musical. There no, weren't many didn't. songs there were, towards yeah, the start. True. There, there were, were a lot at the start, a good but, three or four. But then it just kind of stopped. We had. Um, no life without wife and then it kind of stops again and then you have that one the email song. singing on the rooftop for like 30 seconds and then that's it until the end yeah they didn't have so, defined no it was a bit all over the place but i just mean in terms of the the total duration of the film was yeah the, it's, it's the, shorter than it seems because you have the to singing add it out a bit, version yeah. the singing bits at the start you could have used that to establish some characters yeah better. although if they hadn't been there then this film might not have stuck with us, you know. That's, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Exactly. Well, the, Speaking of the singing, what have we got any other criticisms or points about it? Yeah, I mean, we'd mentioned that the lyrics and the melodies just seemed a little bit off. Like, the melodies weren't really catchy and the, the lyrics sounded a little bit odd. Um, and I don't think it was because either of them were, like, bad necessarily. It's just you kind of expect from a musical sort of like a really catchy powerful hook that you can sing along to mm. and you get annoyed when your family keeps playing the soundtrack in the car <laughs> not talking from experience here <laughs> matilda but also it's you're not just gonna be playing the bride and prejudice soundtrack 
<laughs> oh yeah, I will. I'm gonna annoy the piss out of that. <laughs> it's like to, to me the the lyrics were just it seemed a bit like janky. Like the rhythm wasn't always perfect or didn't perfectly match the last one. When it had it had a couple of lines where they like were run on lines, but instead of feeling like an interesting variation, they just felt like run on lines. Yeah, um, and. And it was like all of it rhymed, but it was like, uh, you know, feels kind of lazy words to pick. Mm. It was like if this was an improvised musical, I'd be like, right. wow, that's impressive. But they've, I assume, they've written it down <laughs> <laughs> before they also get in Not unison. Not freestyle like you, Tom. <laughs> they, they had, yeah, they together had, as 20 people doing <laughs> it as well. And they had two, they had a, someone doing the music and then two dedicated lyric writers. Which, Plus additional lyric writers. Yeah, so you'd have, you'd have thought maybe it'd have turned out a bit better. Yeah, and I don't know how, I don't know how it breaks down. Because even, even thinking back to when, I mean, this has been on our list for a while. We did this this list of films we're currently working through in like late 2021. Oh um, but the only thing that really stuck with me that kind of made me think about it was the dancing mainly. Yeah. I mean, we only saw 20 minutes of it in that geography lesson like years ago. But I think the choreography was generally... The yeah, choreography was fantastic yeah. and it... It was probably even better than I remember it, to be honest. They even go down to their fingers. They're doing all these dance moves, and mm. then they're doing like. Yeah. There is one one kind of funny little bit where there's um, a sort of what feels like it should be an intimate close up shot of uh, some characters <laughs> doing something, and there's just a bunch of like backup dancers in the back going like, like fifty people yeah. doing this. <laughs> <laughs> but I. I as funny as that was, I I did actually like it. I think it added to the whole sort of fun, like yeah, cheesy but enjoyable vibe. And just like the outfits and the colours as well, it was also popped. Yeah, well. but still had the weird early two thousand yeah, saturation. <laughs> it's like yeah. if you put a filter over this thing. Yeah, if if only it was. Oh, if it came out today. Yeah, it looks be oh, masterpiece. Masterpiece. <laughs> mm. Yeah, and, and one other thing I that's a bit odd and it feels a bit odd to say, I kind of expected it to be bad, or at least like not as enjoyable as it was. Like, yeah, it's I, kind of strange that our last episode we were talking about like middle of the road films, and then um, we brought up this. <laughs> it's kind <laughs> of, I mean, I I can see why. Yeah, it it wasn't bad, and I feel like a certain audience would like really really like it I, exactly, I wasn't yeah. too keen on it but i can i think it's definitely got its strengths yeah i i was honestly disappointed that it wasn't more fun yeah I, like <laughs> i was were, like a few bits that like were really funny but i feel like they weren't like there was stuff that we kind of just noticed in the background of things like the the yeah. red guy and the yeah. <laughs> hello and stuff that's that's like, i think not, did the more boring bits of this film compared to something like playtime we ended up looking in the background. Yeah. Maybe it was because... <laughs> we should have turned that for Playtime. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe it's because we just watched Playtime. We were so used yeah. to looking in the background. We are just like, oh my God, Red, red Man. Guy. Jacques Tati is taught us to look in the background of a Bride the Prejudice for a Red Guy. <laughs> and those like backup dancers in the back. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I mean, that's not to say the film doesn't have its issues. It has plenty of them, but I... Just did enjoy it more than I thought I would. Yeah, yeah. Um, I th I do. Th oh, the problem is right. I, I I wanted there to be more like the songs just didn't hit. It's like the songs were pretty fun, but I was just wanting. More. I'm just worried because I'm like I think that I've didn't enjoy it as much. Like the songs just didn't hit as 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 much fun for me. And I don't know. It seemed to lose the vibrancy in the middle. It just kind of stopped. Yeah, that's oh, true. S same same here. I mean, I just. Is the is the choreography and the acting and everything that kind of that makes really it stand holds out for up. me? I, I think the music was a huge disappointment. Editing, yes. the ed some of the music was let down. The, the plot storyline got, story a bit messy, got the mess, end, yeah. messy. Some of the editing choices were just really odd with the like beach scenes and that. Yeah, yeah, so, and just that it kept like um, the fact towards the end it just kept changing location as well. It just made it Oh yeah, yeah, like where are in oh, LA yeah. and then they were in, oh, in Britain somewhere else and then they were in Britain and then they were in a, a by a canal and then a movie theater and That's then they're the, back in a house and the pacing was so strange because you'd back have in these India. long sequences and then you'd have just this quick montage where 
a tons tons of things happen in quick succession. But, but it's you, not even like a montage. No, it's not just a montage. really short scene. Yeah, it's just yeah, a montage should even make sense because you kind of know what you're it's expecting. It's like an with unintentional montage, montage that yeah. tries to progress the plot, but you can't follow it because it's not. Montage is uh, essentially like a better way of just fast forwarding the plot. Yeah, you, you're kind of showing the plot moving, but yeah. without all the detail. This just felt like someone filmed a bunch of like full scenes, realized that the film is going to be like five hours long, and just really cut them down. Yeah. <laughs> See, I, this film I feel like should have been longer and shorter at the same time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, like, they did way too much, and they also needed more time. <laughs> Mm. But, but I they feel like the middle the stuff. was too, yeah. too, too dragged out and the end was too rushed. Yeah. Which I kind of enjoyed the vibe of the middle bit because it was like quite a bit of Adam Sandler stuff. Mm. That, <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> that's if it hadn't been for that, that middle would have felt Single like it dragged so much. Adam Sandler carried the he middle. He did carry it. He really did. <laughs> like, what would that, the second act have been without him? Oh my God. I don't know if I could have stomached it. <laughs> oh, it would have been so dull. It would have just been like the characters like just doing stuff and moping around about the email. And... Yeah, they're sitting around <laughs> in their like grey t-shirts. They've come and eating a lot of those and just going, oh, I hate everything and I'm exactly. bored. I'm going to be alone forever. And you're like, luckily you've got Adam Sandler going, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have a, a conversation at the meal table, but no Adam Sandler. So it is just them being like, hmm. We're all going to be alone. Yeah. We're going to die spinsters. Where would Adam Sandler be with it without his one of two pictures <laughs> of the house that he bought? Um, <laughs> yeah. and then the, the, the hot the, tub jet the, streams. The snake belly dancing <gasps> scene. Oh, the snakes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was even funnier because of Adam Sandler. Yeah, because he was have, um, <laughs> you had what's You had what's-his-face... Um, I've forgotten his name now. Darcy? Darcy. You know, the guy from the book. <laughs> I've forgotten his name. But, um, yeah, he was sitting there looking a bit confused, but, boy, Adam Sandler just, like... He had his mouth open. <laughs> 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 and then there's a bit where you think the dancer's stopped and then she gets back up and then both of them go like... <laughs> 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 and they're both looking at each other whether they should clap. That's fun. Oops. And with that, let's rate the film. <laughs> <laughs> Would you say it, it lived up to its title? There was a bride. Uh, there was prejudice as yeah. well. Yeah, there was some prejudice against arranged marriages. And India general. But mm. also against uh, Mr. Darcy, if you think about it. He's, would you say that Mr. Darcy is a literally me character? <laughs> <laughs> He's Patrick Bateman, so yeah. <laughs> he does have He's Patrick like Patrick Bateman, Bateman mixed with, um, what's his face, <laughs> Troy from High School Musical. He is. <laughs> oh my God. I never saw that before. They literally stole High School Musical. If you mash Bride their faces Bates. together, you get his face. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, what an all star cast of the <laughs> Sandler and. <laughs> Christian Bale oh, and uh, Jack Christian Tatty <laughs> and um, I forgot his name that's in High School Musical um, I want to say Jason Derulo it's not Jason, it's Derulo. Not Jason Derulo. Derulo oh this is really going to annoy me and it had, uh, oh J. J. the J. guy who was in son. Dirty Grandpa yeah it's him uh, oh, what's this? <laughs> Zac Efron Zac yeah, Efron yeah 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 yeah, I love that that's, that's your Zac go-to Zac Efron movie. Oh, Dirty Grandpa. Yeah. <laughs> I need to rewatch Dirty Grandpa. That was a film. Right, what would you this give it? This was also a film. This, was, a this film. was also a film. And, well, so, I enjoyed it, generally. I didn't, in, I definitely enjoyed it more than I thought I would. I didn't enjoy it anywhere near as much as I could. <laughs> so, you know, I'm going to go... <laughs> How could you have done What? It? <laughs> if you were high on I'm just, just let it sit right here. I don't know. <laughs> Makes as much sense as Bride and Prejudice, to be fair. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to rate it an and out of Bride and Prejudice. No! <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? I'm going to go a six. Oh my God. Wow. Point Solid six. six lower than Solid play, six. play time. <laughs> Go on, Ollie. Oh, you go first. Oh, God, I'm going to go... I enjoyed it, but it was a big mess. Yeah. It was a big mess. I'm going to go five. If the songs were catchy 
and I could like be sit belting these classic bangers out. It'd be a, it could be a six or a seven, but mm. it just didn't hit. I think I enjoyed the experience of watching a movie with my friends. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. That's on its thing. own, it wouldn't have been as fun. On its own, I still would have enjoyed the dancing, but in the middle, I would have been like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> if I was watching this at 9am without like much sleep, I would have watched the dancers and then gone straight back to sleep. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> watched no missed life all life. Adam Sandler. Yeah, oh, watched... And Red Guy. Red and Red Guy. <laughs> <laughs> See, I... Um, I understand this is going to be very, very controversial. Oh, I understand why uh, the, the Pride and Prejudice novel is so acclaimed and everyone loves it, but I did not enjoy it very much. <gasps> Get out! And I I, I, I'm going to be honest, I had, to, I would rather rewatch Pride and Prejudice than reread. I think that Pride I think Prejudice. I'm the, I've not so, read the book, but I'd rather rewatch yeah. Pride and Prejudice. Um, there's, there's a reason I've never read read it because it's it just, just not for me, and I it just doesn't sound I interesting. Get it's, like why people like it, but uh, it just kind of annoys me. But this film, um, yeah, it was definitely flawed, but it was fun. So I'm gonna go a four point seven. Oh, wow, cool. Four point seven. Well, I'm thinking I might bump mine down actually. But oh, just, go for it, man. Oh, Keep Ben, it. you can you can own it. You can yeah. own it. You have you no, enjoyed no, it. You had a good time. I'm, I'm thinking. I'm thinking about like it compared to playtime. Although, um, but you had a good time, Ben. No, I'll own it. I'll keep it. In a own sense. it. Yes, good. that's what we love to see. Don't, don't be swayed by other people's reviews, guys. Um, but except our finally ones. filling in that sort of void between six and two. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. Right. So this is a mid film. It is mid. Mid. Yeah, mid. I literally rated it the middest score, <laughs> <laughs> which it feels cruel to say like mid, but mid. <laughs> Why does that feel worse than giving it a five out of ten? <laughs> <laughs> it was fun, but it was you know a bit mid. A bit mid, yeah. So we usually run a submission spotlight section, and we have had submissions. We just couldn't be bothered to watch them yeah. because we're very great people. We're short on time. Yeah, I've been we're banking that. them. Yeah, so we actually Would will probably have one oh. next week. I I assume. Sorry, next two weeks. It's time for our bonus segment <laughs> instead. But 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 before we do that, before we do that, if you have a piece of media that you'd like us to review, send it in to entertainmentofexcellence.weebly.com Is that an email? on the contact. Yeah, I'm just writing. An yeah, email. send us an email and we'll send one back with a kissing emoji at the end of it. Exactly, or just DM us on Instagram, or I guess, or TikTok or whatever. At EV Podcast, which stands for Entertainment of Excellence Podcast. It does. Um, should we have a jingle for the Would You Rather? Whoa, off the dome. Would you, you rather? rather? <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were going to do the same one. Then. What was that? Would you, you rather? rather? There we go. That's yeah, the new yeah, jingle. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember we had a uh, would you? We had a recommendations jingle that yeah. I only just remembered. We did. So um, is that ever I'll do it next aired? time. Uh, once in the actual episode oh, yeah, itself, yeah. but I'm I'm just gonna do it. I think would we'll do it. you rather? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, we should just do it in episode. There's like there's another podcast I listen to. Where they they Would just sing the jingle, and one of them goes ding. Rather, <laughs> and uh, she always remembers the sing. He always remembers the ding. Go on. Right, oh, here's one. Thank you. I'm Tell me if the card's card bad. Oh, sorry. Oh, this is a, a step up from last episode. Oh, is it? Okay, yeah. okay. I'm actually struggling this time. Of which oh, one? Really? Pick. Ooh. But I think I've got it. Yeah. Okay. Try go first this time. Go on then. Go on. Do you remember the rules? Well, you pick one the one that you'd rather. Pick the one, you can't pick both or neither. That's right. Although you will be tempted to with this one. Okay. Would you rather wear a top hat every day? Every day? Really? Every single day. <laughs> Not even on... Even on <laughs> <laughs> I got too excited by that. <laughs> God, sorry. <laughs> oh, fart joke. That's good. Oh, That's God. good stuff. <laughs> That's good stuff. <laughs> I have to pause the episode. <laughs> Toxic waste. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm glad this is smell-o-vision. 
<laughs> <It's been> 4D. <laughs> <laughs> I, hope, I hope that picks up on mic. <laughs> on all three mics. It's pretty loud. <laughs> Sorry. I was shaking, I was like, whoa! <laughs> no control. <laughs> Ben's just standing over there. He's talking, even though no one can hear him. Did you even read it? <laughs> Ben's asked, did you well, even read the question? I think that's your answer though, isn't it? What um, is it? <laughs> yeah. Or, so, sorry, there's an or. <laughs> Wear a top hat every day. Are you going to this one? Or, <laughs> Bart on Air Woods is what Ben says. Just <laughs> or wear an umbrella hat every day. Or oh, both. Or. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I can't. Oh, I can't pick. Yeah, one on each head, Ben. Do you want to sit? Down? <laughs> You're gonna stay there. <laughs> I, th- I think it's gone. I'm acclimatized to it at least. Yeah, but it's like when you can't smell your own sweat. Yeah, but I could smell it originally. <laughs> yeah, well, that's because uh, it was fucking rank. <laughs> the umbrella hat every day is more practical. Then you don't need an umbrella. Yeah, but no, I'd go top hat because it just um, looks cooler. I think I'd go top hat as well. Like, lead poisoning and all. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Hatters. Mm. All right, Ben, what's yours? Oh, what did I actually put? Just scrub it <laughs> in his pockets. Oh. oh, there it is. Oh. Would you rather be able to read people's minds or be able to predict the future? Oh. It's a real thunker, that I'd one. say predict read. the future. Oh, I'm, I would say read people's minds because I would hate to know the future. Same, but I wouldn't want to like... Be too intrusive to other people, yeah. Oh, I don't care. I mean, I've already said I'd pick invisible. Although that was last episode. <laughs> I'd actually pick fly. This is the payoff to last episode's bit. <laughs> I would actually pick fly. Not that episode See, of Breaking Bad. Mm, yeah. Yeah, I think I'd go read people's minds. Mm. Just because If you can tell what's happening in the future, I'm guessing you can't change the course of the future. You just know. Well, that's the question. Well, that, that, that's the whole... You know, when the whole time travel thing comes in, because once you know the future, yeah. if you try and change it, mm. will you then change the future? I know. Or is it set? Again, the, the, like when we answered the I just time ignore traveling all those... one, it just gets too messy, doesn't it? So yeah. you don't really want to... So I it's... just ignore the whole time travel thing I just and just read people's minds. Minority Report, and, you know, he tries to change it, but it doesn't work, you know? Or kind of... No, does it? I can't remember. Never mind. No, it doesn't <laughs> work. It's just different to how they expected you know, so maybe you'll predict it wrong. Oh. Right. Maybe you'll you'll get on oh no, the the minority report is the alternate. Oh, I can't remember. <laughs> that movie's great though. Okay, should we do mine? I think both of mine are quite good. Do you want to? If you want to hear, go them. for both. Yeah. Because this first one's quite EV related. Okay. And the second one's, one's a lot. The second one's a bit of fun. Are you a keen or? Should we do EV or related or or a bit of fun? We'll do a bit of fun. A bit, a bit of fun, fun first, and then we- get down to business. <laughs> okay. Would you rather? Drive in a real-life Mario Kart race. Ooh, or sounds dangerous. train a real-life Pikachu. Mario Kart race. Yeah. Obviously. Really? I think I'd die in a real-life... Yeah, but get yeah, a but shell sick way to go out. <laughs> but if... Yeah. I think it, the stipulation that you can't die. Oh, so with like the it, stipulation yeah, It's you like you're in-game. You okay, that'd be idea. fun. Yeah, you can just respawn. Yeah, because yeah, training a real-life Pikachu, that'd be frustrating, wouldn't it? Yeah, because you I mean, would I've, just I've got two die. dogs. Do you think if you get, like, one of the mushrooms, like, you actually get high? Oh, that'd be good. Cause that would be sick. Like, what like, like, what the, what's the point of training a Pikachu? Also, it'd be so annoying, because you'd be like, you're trying to get them to zap something, and they just zap you, and you're like, oh, great. Yeah. Being thunderbolted or whatever. Sorry. And plus, you were the one that wanted to be small in one of the questions we did off air. It's true. So if you got zapped with the small fire, that's what I call it. Uh, then you'd just become small anyway. Mm. That's true. By small fire, you mean lightning. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Now the E of E deep Ooh. question. Would you rather never read another book <gasps> or never watch another film? Oh my god, I would. Never watch another film, unfortunately, because... <gasps> if, oh, my God! Cover you your could ears, never read listeners. another book... Get out! That, would, that encompasses, like, fiction and non-fiction. Oh, yeah, you'd fail your uni. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but what you if your lectures are recorded? Money. That's not a film. All right. <laughs> would count? you say that an exam paper counts as a book? Does it text... No, but I'd say any... Like a textbook, yeah. 
Okay, I guess that's got Buck in the name. I just think that you, you come across more books than you do films, even if I'm not reading as many books as films. Okay. I think I'd not read another book because in the past, like, five years, I don't think I've read many books. And they've all been non-fiction. So... Oh. If, if, if it didn't incept in my life, I would definitely pick never read another book. Just because I've not become much as a book, but just I'm just in a book lull at the moment. It's the only thing. I'm coming back, though, with, through, as always, after my lull, I start reading comics again, and then I read books. Mm. It's usually what happens. Five-year book lull. Yeah, and then I burn out again. <laughs> um, so what we're really saying is I'm the only true keynote. Out of well, no, I said I'd never read another book. I'd pre- I'm just, I love watching movies, you know? And how how would okay, I... We're true keynotes. We're yeah, true keynotes. I hate watching films. I just... Yeah. Suffer yeah, through 150 a year. <laughs> Bride and Pledge just was like, like walking on Lego for you. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. So write in oh, to E of E uh, email and tell us what you would have done for those things oh actually also, maybe you could email in your would you rathers oh. that's true email is in a would you rather and we will read it on air and answer it there's, on only, air. there's not many of these cards yeah well there's tons but we've done most of them we've done off air, well, so, off air, so. Yeah. send in Any, yours uh, please Kino one specifically oh sending Kino specific would you rathers that would be you know incredible would you rather I don't know Tarkovsky didn't die from <laughs> radiation poisoning or someone else he didn't did. die. Or he did. <laughs> or he did. <laughs> or he did. <laughs> I'd rather he did. Because <laughs> he might just put out loads of mid films. <laughs> and that, and you would hate it if Tarkovsky... Imagine if you were like, his legacy. Tarkovsky stayed alive and everyone was just posting L fell off both <laughs> <laughs> Tarkovsky was still alive and he just like went into anime he sat, oh, God. he sat crying in his bedroom looking at letterboxd reviews saying like <laughs> mid <laughs> like, uh, when he got 20 percent rotten tomatoes and fucking <laughs> offed himself <laughs> wow i guess i would prefer he died of radiation poisoning <laughs> <laughs> um, does, is, speaking of radiation poisoning it's time for recommendations <laughs> <laughs> right, we've got we one. Gonna, we're going to recommend Kangaroo Jack. <laughs> <laughs> kangaroo no, Jack. No, the Australian. Oh, Benjamin. You're getting your kangaroo films mixed up. Oh, what? Where? But this one did have a kangaroo in it. Yeah. And an axolotl. And an axolotl. And an axolotl. And what the Australian film we're going to talk about is Talk to Me. It's the oh. spooky hair. Oh, Ollie's been possessed. <laughs> I let you in. Oh, thanks, Ben. Wink. Um. And this is a uh, a cheeky Aussie horror movie. Uh, I think it was distributed by A24, but I don't know. I think so, but it it was, it didn't, the there was no logo. logo. There were about a million before the film started, not yeah. A24. That's how you know it's so, indie, because there's yeah. like hundred got places. funding from like tons of different sources. Yeah, loads of sources gave them like a thousand quid or something. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to say, I'm glad they did. Yeah. This was pretty good. It was, it was good. Which um, is why we're recommending it on Entertainment a, of Excellence. A group of, of like high schoolers get this hand that's maybe just porcelain, maybe there's a real hand in it. And then if, if they hold the hand and they say, talk to me, ghost talks to them in it. And then they can go like, I'll let you in. And then the ghost possesses them for a bit, but only for 90 seconds or they can't go over. Because then they might want to stay. It's true. How yeah. did they discover that? Don't know. I think it was written on the hand. Well, probably. Matt, was it was it the oh, guy at the them, start? Yeah, the the other guy at the start that like tried to kill his brother. Yeah, I know. But how did they know it was ninety second was the cut off point? Because if he'd have done it for like two minutes, say they wouldn't then go. Oh well, it must be ninety seconds. Don't know. Oh well, trial and error. <laughs> yeah, trial and error. That was just like just the fiftieth guy in the yeah, yeah. train. Um, and it's it's genuinely it's got good characters. Uh, it's got like some actually it's good humour at the start as well and Decent it really gets effect. you to like these characters so that you can then get like absolutely your heart torn out of you it's pretty um, down with the kids it's quite down it with is. The because it's, it's directed quite... by some YouTubers Oh, it's got quite a good blend Tarkovsky of there's some like references that would make you unless you're like a 12 year old you kind of like cringe a little bit but it's not 
it's not like a bunch of like 50 year olds going oh what's cool with the kids mm. it's like what are people this age actually probably into and it's yeah. kind of cringe let's be honest and it's correct it's um, correct Oh, it's good to watch. It's pretty brutal. It's quite yeah. like oh, it's yeah, it's brutal. quite intense. It surprised me. It was a fifteen, to be honest. Yeah, it's, quite it's pretty. Whoa. It's <laughs> a proper. If you want a properly scary, miserable horror movie, <laughs> this is this is for you. Yeah. Um, it doesn't turn out amazing for everyone, but it didn't turn out as bad as I thought. No, I was slightly worried it would be just bleak, but it's okay. It will be okay. I promise. I'll hold your hand. <laughs> end- but not the scary hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the ending's good. It's not good one is it's not one where you left a bit like disappointed by the ending. No, it was and good. It's end. not really one you left questioning either. No. I think no. it's a really it's a nice it, sort of like bow on the story. It yeah. wraps up in a nice little bow. There's some bits I think are slightly unexplained for example how do they know the 90 second thing uh, and, but I think with these things it's best not to get too bogged down in details mm. exactly um, and what, I was going to say something really insightful <laughs> <laughs> we'll just it have a kangaroo in it. oh what a good point Tom yeah oh like, thanks oh, thanks yeah yeah, yeah it good. did have a kangaroo yeah, in it, yeah. It? yeah yeah they hit a kangaroo and they sing chandelier they do um, probably better than the original. I'd oh, say. it's got like stylish montages. Yeah, there's that montage. That's good. It's it probably has someone making out with a dog. Yeah. Oh yeah, that exactly toe happens. sucking. Yeah, that was yeah. Ollie's favorite bit. Um, <laughs> yeah, Quentin Tarantino. If you're out there and you haven't seen this film, you know, talk to me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> don't talk to me. I don't want <laughs> you in my <laughs> the weird. audio listeners, me and Ben just did the worst high five in history. No, we did not. We did a weirder one like a few episodes ago. Which is why you may not have heard anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, that was, yeah. yeah, good high five, yeah, Ben. Video viewers know what's up. Yeah. So with that, you should subscribe to us on YouTube. And we're on Spotify now with the video and everything. Leave a like. Oh leave us God. leave yeah. us a five-star review, please. That would really help us on out. Your podca- you can just do it in app now on your you podcast can. app of choice. You can. Spotify have it now. Have you seen that? You can just go and give five stars. You can. And if you want to give us a one-star review on something like um, Apple Podcasts where you can leave a review, leave us, leave us a bad one and we'll read it and tell you why you're wrong on her yeah but if you could leave the bad ones on other people's podcasts but yeah right, like two e of e podcasts yeah yeah then yeah, we'll yeah, yeah, yeah. if you leave it on like the off menu podcast or something like that yeah because we listen to every podcast because we say films tv all of it exactly i listen to every we podcast. consume yeah. every bit of media so we'll look at the reviews we also look at the reviews for that yeah or you could leave you could leave your bad review on uh, a comment to the youtube upload of mirror by tarkovsky yeah you know? things like that we'll read it we'll read <laughs> or it. the youtube upload of uh playtime yeah yeah um i don't think bride of prejudice has a youtube upload sorry no but just on like imdb Leave a one star review and be like, EOV podcast episode on Bride of Prejudice. Yeah. Was if bad. You, um, if you go into your notepad oh. on, your, on your computer and mm. you type https colon slash slash www.entertainmentofexcellence.weebly.com, then you write your thing. It will appear on our website. Yeah. Or send us an email. <gasps> yeah. And uh, Entertainment we'll say of we love you. at gmail.com. And with that, Tom, I believe you have a catchphrase. Oh, God, I didn't think of a catchphrase. <laughs> what did you ever think of a catchphrase? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the catchphrase is n- n- no life without Bride and Prejudice. Red. All right, see you. <laughs> All right, see you. All right, see you. <laughs> no life. Why did you say it's red? Presented by Ollie Luff, Tom Sweeney, and Ben Stinson. Music by Tom Sweeney and Ben Stinson. Audio engineered by Ben Stinson at Longwater Productions. All Right C. Yar, created by Al Wright, Sr. All Rights, brackets, C. Yar. Close brackets, reserved.